What's up guys? Today, I wanna talk about how I've managed to reach the top 1% of players in Rocket League while training less than 30 minutes a day on average. Now, my goal with this video is gonna be a little different. This isn't gonna be scripted. It's not cut up like a lot of my other ones. Instead, I just wanna give you guys a behind the scenes look on what I actually do on a day-to-day -day basis and basically the strategy behind what I do to get maximum results with my limited schedule. So if that sounds interesting, pull up rings, grab a cup of coffee, pull up free play, because today we're gonna to be sitting back and talking about my top four training strategies that have helped catapult my improvement over the past few months. Let's get into it. All right, guys, my goal with this video is to try to speak from my experience, at least as much as I can, to help you structure your training routine to get the most results in the least time possible. And I think to do that, there are four main questions we have to answer when it comes to your training. The first one is gonna be how you should train. Big picture, how do you actually set up your training strategy over time um, and break it apart? That's number one. Number two is gonna be how hard should you train? Essentially, how to tell if you're training the right way. Then number three is gonna be, of course, what you should train. What are the most important skills that are gonna give you the most value for your time playing? Because those are gonna be the things that are gonna help you rank up the fastest. And then lastly, number four, when you should train. Something that I know a lot of people don't think about, but something that I still wanted to give mention to. Let's try to tackle the first question and talk about how you should train. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the idea of space training versus mass training. Now, for those of you who don't know, space training is the idea of taking a certain training box, taking a certain you know training regimen and splitting it up over time into multiple parts. So if you have two hours of training, spacing that training might look like splitting it up over four days, you know, playing 30 minutes a day. Mass training, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. It's taking the training load and just knocking it all out at once, right? The easiest way to understand this is with school, right? Think cramming. That's what mass training is. And the thing I've realized is that space training is so, so much more effective for learning quicker and will always get the job done more efficiently than cram training. Now for me specifically, my past year has been very divided. On the one hand, I have to do school. On the other, I've started up this YouTube just in the past year, uh, making videos. I have the coaching program. You know, I have being a university student and inadvertently, I've just been spacing my training out because I simply don't have time, you know, to sit down like some of the pros out there and play for two, three, four, five hour sessions, you know, on the regular. I actually did a little digging on the science behind this, and there was this really, really great study that I wanna bring up. Basically, in this study, what they did was they grabbed a full college team of baseball players and they split the team up into two groups. They had the A group and the B group. The goal of the study was to help the players get better at hitting curveballs. And so what they did with the study was in group A, all they did was they would throw curveball after curveball. The idea was that they would hit curveballs straight. Then they took group B and what they did was they weaved in curveballs and fastballs randomly. And here's the crazy part. At the end of the hour long drill, when they saw the curveball, group A did hit better over the short term, but then when they reevaluated players a week later, those who had seen the mixed fastball and curveball spread out over time, retained the information better and held it longer over long-term memory. Mass training feels good. It feels like you're learning really, really quickly and you're getting an instant return on your investment but it doesn't stick. Space training, on the other hand, feels hard. It's tough to come back again and again, feeling rusty every time you're training. But you gotta remember, that actual feeling, that feeling of being rusty every time you get on is actually what is causing you to learn. So firstly, the biggest mindset shift that I've done with all things in my life is spacing out training. 
if your actual goal is to learn, right, and not just perform on a test, that's where the school system fails. <laughs> if your actual goal is to learn for the sake of learning, right, if you're trying to get better at Rocket League, for example, you need to space your practice. Getting on for very, very long sessions is not only unproductive, but it will make you forgetful. Try and give some thought to how you're actually training and space your practice out. The second tip I want to give is actually talking a little bit about how hard you should train. So we're going to talk about what you should train in a second, but let's talk about how hard you should train. And this is something that I've actually gone over with with one of my buddies when we were both trying to learn air roll. And we basically were at a point where neither of us could continue a continuous air roll. You know, you see me continuous air rolling now, um, but we were talking about how we should actually learn it. And one of the things he emphasizes is if you are training, and you are not getting blackout moments, you're not training the right way. And so what does that mean? Well, blackout moments are basically just when you're playing, you know, let's say you're in rings, you're playing, you're flying around with your car, you're air rolling, and you get to a point where you just don't know what to do. Your car is facing a certain direction, you don't know where to point your joystick, and you just crash, right? You fall out of the sky and you don't know what to do. And you wanna train in ways across the board that maximize your blackout moments, not minimize, but maximize. So if you're training something and you're finding that you can do it while not even having to think about it, that thing is probably not what you should be training at this point. You wanna train skills to the point that you don't have to think about them, but if you're not challenging yourself in training, why are you training in the first place? And so in rings, that means flying around and, you know, air rolling both ways, holding down air roll, doing, you know, doing random weird motions with your car, flicking your joystick around in ways you normally don't to get better control of your car. But, you know, in free play, it could also be the same thing. You know, you're hitting the ball around and you're finding that you're not really doing anything. You're not really thinking about it. Well, start jumping sooner. Hit the ball in the air. And, you know, normally in game, you would wait to get the read. Just jump right away. You know, try to try to pre-jump, try to pre-read. Um, do things in training that you are not comfortable doing and that you don't want to do. You have to make sure you're training hard enough that you're getting blackout moments. More blackout moments means more learning. Don't forget it. That's tip number two. Okay, so now we've talked about how you should train and how hard you should train. Let's talk about what you should actually train. This is something that I actually had the most trouble explaining to people because when people are at different points in their journeys, it's hard to say, you know, this is what you need to train. You know, this is exactly what you need to improve. And if you've looked at my channel, that's the reason I don't upload videos like, you know, best mechanic for every rank. I think I've done, you know, best training packs, best workshop maps, because I can kind of twist those. But when people ask me, what's the best mechanic for this rank? I really, really don't like that question. Because in my opinion, the best training routines are the ones that work across the ranks. So what I've actually done recently that has helped me continue to get results, even when I put less and less time in, is transforming it to match a proper weightlifting routine. In weightlifting, where a lot of people will go wrong, is they'll think, if I want a big chest, I need to do a bunch of chest flies. I need to do a bunch of chest isolation. When in reality, what stimulates the most growth in the fastest way possible is the compound lifts. What most people are doing is training compound lifts consistently spaced over time in short intervals with high intensity and that is how they're getting results. It's literally that simple. And with Rocket League, it's no different. Yet people approach the game thinking, I need to get good at air dribbles to get good. I need to get good at flip resets to get good. When it's like, no, you need to get good at aerial car control. You need to get good at ground car control. You need to get good at recoveries and speed and reads. These are the things that matter. For the most part, your training should look the same when you are a diamond and when you are a grand champ. Here's how you tell if your training routine is good. If you can only follow the training routine that you're currently following, at the rank you are at right now, that is a bad training routine. The reason people mass practice is often because they have no direction, right? They have no clue what they're actually doing. So they basically practice on motivation and not on a framework, not on you know a structure or a strategy. 
So the way you wanna set up your training is by choosing training methods and training strategies that allow you to train the compound movements as you progress through the ranks. Then the isolation movements, you now going back to the weightlifting analogy, are what you incorporate in at the end, depending on what rank you're at. The way I structure my private coaching program, what we'll do is we'll have them do things like, you know, dribble to overhaul, workshop maps like that, uh, rings, right? Practicing doing read training, speed training, recovery training, mostly in free play and workshop maps to get better. Training packs are a great isolation tool to train. They're a great way to train a, you know, a specific mechanic if you need to dial in on that mechanic and you need to learn it. But by and large, that is not what your training should look like. And just to prove my point, a lot of people are shocked when I say this, but I don't think I've done a training pack in my last four months of playing, five months of playing outside of a YouTube video. And I don't say that to say, you know, you guys need to go do that exact same thing because I'm guessing you are at a different point in your training um, than I am. But the idea is something that you want to incorporate. So the lower rank you are, the more fair it is to practice specific mechanics, right? If you're low rank, you're going to want to learn how to wave dash. You're going to want to learn how to half flip. Fine. Invest some time in just learning those specific mechanics. But by and large, start training the compound movements and not the isolation one. I'll stop my rambling there. That is tip number three. Let's dive in to the final aspect of my training regimen with tip number four. Let's talk about the last thing I have written down here, which is when should you train? Going back to the idea of the actual science behind learning, I've realized I have, and I see a lot of people have, an absolutely massive problem with learning when it comes to video games. When people think, you know, playing video games, the natural image that jumps into people's head is usually, you know, somebody staying up late at night, you know, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., lights off, you know, staring at the computer screen. But something I've actually realized is playing the game when I learn better is so, so huge for actually maximizing my hours. I mean, still, in the past, you know, three months I've been playing, I think I am learning faster now than I ever have. I mean, I just started, for example, practicing, you know, flip resets, double flip resets, and I don't think I have more than five, six hours of training doing these mechanics, but I'm at the point where I can very nearly double flip reset, you know, at least in training, right, yeah. on command. And I think that is solely because of when I train. So if you're watching this right now and you fall victim to this problem, stop queuing games super late at night. Do not hop on Rocket League when you're on your last brain cell because playing during those hours is just junk volume, right? You're not actually consolidating any of the learning when you're tired. And be honest with yourself, think about for a second if that play style is actually conducive to your learning. Odds are, for most people, it is not. All right, those are the four main things that have helped guide my training and get me on path to hopefully reach SSL by the end of the summer. If you did find this video helpful, I know it's a little different and the YouTube algorithm probably won't pick it up. So if you did enjoy, share it with a buddy, share it on any Discord servers you're a part of, I'd really, really appreciate it. Normally, I'd go ahead and plug the coaching program here, link you guys to a video where I talk more about it. But I understand some people have been frustrated with me doing plugs recently, something I'm very adamant about is not taking in sponsors on the channel that I can't get behind. And so what I've been doing instead is just talking about my own stuff. Understand watching my videos, being subbed to the channel is more than enough for me, even if you can't get involved with the coaching program. Seriously, just the viewership and support means everything to me. Shout out if you made it to this point in the video, go down to the comment section and type, hey Luke, you're a sound guy. This video was a little weird, but cool. I'll go give it a heart. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate the support. Until next time, peace.